shoes. A great man once said, hey Tony Williams, wanna play drum set in my band? And then Tony Williams said, why sure Miles Davis, drum sets sound great with bands. Paraphrasing, but that was definitely the gist. Anyway, 50 years after that historic conversation, well into the blossoming of this legendary tradition of dudes playing drum sets in bands and sounding really awesome, this other lady once said, Hey Harry, wanna play Cajon in my band at this writer's round downtown? We're playing for tips, so I don't know if I'll be able to pay you $13 or $5. And I said, Uh, well, will food be provided? And she said, No. Also, parking at the venue will cost you $20. Fine, I'll do it, but I'm sad about it. So, my dudes, after five too many episodes of paying $7 for the privilege of playing the listening song lounge cafe room cafe, I decided there must be a way to honor the music without hunching over a wooden box and forfeiting my dignity while the fat cats of the parking meter industry rake in the dough. Without further ado, I propose to you, dude, but what if I don't want to play the cajon, dude? Oh, that sounds like sh- Now I should start by acknowledging that the title of this video may very well have already alienated some of you. Maybe you do want to play the cajon, and if so, I salute you. Pay me no attention if this is the case. I want to be clear that the main reason I dislike cajon is that I am extremely bad at it. Naysayers of my naysaying now need, let's move on to examining the problem, and maybe even some solutions. So firstly, know your enemy. What is a cajon? I don't know. I legitimately don't know. In an attempt to give you a balanced account on this issue, I tried googling it. And the first thing I found out is basically that in 16th century South America, African slaves weren't allowed to play their drums. So they just started hitting the crates they were being ordered to carry around instead. So we're off to a pretty demeaning start. Then, best I can tell, companies like LP and Sawtooth just stamped their logo on the crate and said, Eureka! Get Nam on the phone. We've just innovated the art of percussion forever. And if the Neo-James Taylor sounds of 2017 songwriter rounds where talented singers are forced to include their less talented younger siblings by giving them a wooden participation box to sit and wail on or any indication, then indeed, Cajones have truly innovated the art form in a certain sense. But this phenomenon is happening in camps all the way up the ladder, including some pretty high-level artists. So what gives? And also, what happened to the bottom of half of my face? Oh, right! I'm sitting on a cajon! I know when I get called to play cajon, the key factors put to me are usually the following. One, it's an acoustic performance, so we're not using electric instruments or amps that can compete with a big old drum set. Two, we have to fit our entire act into the corner of a radio studio, normally meant to barely fit DJ Rick and Bubba in a condenser microphone. And or three, we're flying, so whatever you bring has to fit on an airplane anyway. And I can see why the solution at first glance might seem to be, let's just build the negative space of an overhead bin out of plywood and call it a day. But after a few years of desperately seeking any excuse I could to avoid breaking my hands in half while simultaneously failing to achieve even the musical tone quality of Cotton Batsy's Coconuts, I'm here to offer my fellow sufferers some drummier alternatives. Let's rock. So my first stop in the quest to pull music out of this storage crate was finding a way to put my feet to use. And thanks to the good dudes at Minel, I discovered there's actually such a thing as a cajon pedal, so at least we feel like we're playing a drum, which excited me greatly until I hooked one up and realized I was still kicking a freaking tree stump. So that of course led to the realization that, well, if pedals are allowed, and this wooden slave box takes up 16 by 16 by 16 inches anyway, damn if I don't instead take this random object of the exact same size, which coincidentally has the advantage of being an actual, actual drum. drum! Very good, so I've got a kick pedal, I'm kicking a drum, and hey, it even sounds like a kick with these 16 inch heads Evan specially designed to fit Tom Hoops. So now I just need that backbeat sound, and at this point in the journey, I'm incredibly pleased to find out that Pearl makes the tiniest little baby snare drum I've ever seen in my life. It's 10 inches in diameter and thin enough to fit in my backpack. It's the short fuse, baby. By the way, that drum was in development under the name M80 when I shot all the live footage you're about to see, but fear not, it is the short fuse. Same goes for the one I use, which is just a Masterworks version suited to my hardware and wood choices. And dude was the short fuse meant for this tiny acoustic kit in the making, because it comes with a little percussion rod mount thingy, which just so happens to be the same diameter as a floor tom leg. So if you space them right, you can thread the leg through both, and now they're like a cocktail kit, dude. So load and behold, I'm getting away with some real drum sounds on gigs I got called to play cajon on, scaling from little club gigs all the way up to some of the country's biggest amphitheaters. But the problem still stands that I'm kicking an upright drum and it 
feels unnatural, just, just go with it. It's my excuse for why my groove still sounds crappy. And that, my dudes, is when I found out Pearl also makes a floor tom converter for this exact situation. It's called the Jungle Gig. This little piece blew the whole equation open for me. See, what you do is you stick an Optimount on your floor tom, then you stick the Jungle Gig shoe right in there where a tom arm would go. You flip it on a side and tubular dude is a tiny flyable bass drum. For stability, it comes with two little legs to stick where ordinarily your floor tom legs would go, which leaves you one open for an L arm and bodacious dude. You're kicking a proper sideways drum with a snare mount and perfectly atop it. So I'm thinking surely I'm in business now as I approach the southwest checking counter and the lady goes, how many bags are you checking dude? And don't call me Shirley. And I said, all I got is this one drum bag. How many bags could I have? Very well, ma'am. I will go get a duffel bag. And now I'm getting into greedy territory. I recognize that, but I just want to show the zealots watching how far you can take this acoustic rig idea and get away with it. So I grabbed just three tiny pieces of hardware, especially designed to be lightweight and compact. I grabbed my two favorite tiny cymbals, and what the hell, I got room to spare? Give me that two, ah, I'm full. Maybe next time on that one. And I'm out the door again, still feeling like I packed pretty light. In fact, both checked bags are under the 50 pound weight limit for those of you concerned about the $300,000 overweight bag privilege fee. Ah! So let me show you the finished product. I mean, dudes and dudettes, you cannot make this stuff up. It fits together like a gat darn Lego set, y'all. You clamp your tiny cymbal holder to the third floor tom leg fitting. Sweet. Clamp your snare to this tiny hi-hat stand. Gnarly. Now you got a range of sounds from ethereal down brushy stuff all the way through rute up to a nice full-on backbeat sound that can translate even to your tens of thousands kinds of crowds. From there, all you need is discretion. I'm not saying I have it, I'm just saying you better if you slip this stuff in on a cajon gig and you want the call back. Start with brushes, make that artist ask you for more. And if they look at you funny when you bring it in, just say, don't worry, listening song lounge cafe room cafe. It's not a drum set, it's just a, dude, I don't want to play cajon percussion rig. As for those whose masters insist on cajons nonetheless, my heart is with you and we will all continue to pray for your emancipation. Peace, love, and freedom, my dudes. Oh, before I go though, you know I have to compulsively give some drum stuff away. So who wants this M80 snare drum? Oh right, I forgot now they call it the short fuse. The short dudes. Leave a comment and tell us what they should have named it. And the dude or dudette whose title rules the rest will receive my drum in the mail as a reward. If you don't want the drum, help me decide who to give it to by upvoting the title you like the best. And subscribe to find out who wins in my next video. Speaking of winners, congrats to Keith Dude from Michigan for winning this live album signed by Stefan Lessard. Boy, let's talk more playing. Till the next one, thank you for watching, dudes.